In the last video, we calculated the horizontal distance a Ferrari travels while it accelerated at a rate of 8.1 meters per second per second. And we figured out that that distance was 44.1 meters. That is, the Ferrari needed 44.1 meters to go from rest to a final velocity of 60 miles per hour. In this video, we're going to calculate the height that we would have to drop that same Ferrari from in order for it to reach a final velocity of 60 miles per hour. That is, what we're looking for is the height that we need to drop this car from in order for it to reach a final velocity of 60 miles per hour just before it hits the ground. Now in the last video, we said that 60 miles per hour worked out to be a final velocity of 26.8 meters per second. Now one thing that you need to take into account is the direction that this car is traveling. This car is going to be accelerating from rest in the downward direction. So, so we need to include the negative sign to indicate direction that this car is going to travel. So remember, if this is our coordinate system, this car is going to be traveling in the negative y direction. So the initial velocity, again, is going to be 0 meters per second. This car is going to be released from rest. And in the course of solving this problem, we're going to find that the distance we have to drop this car from is going to be less than the distance that this car needs to accelerate from rest to 60 miles per hour while it's traveling in the horizontal direction. And the reason for that is because this car is going to be accelerating in the downward direction due to the force of gravity. So gravity is going to be speeding this car up in the downward direction at 9.8 meters per second per second. So the acceleration of the car is going to be greater. And one of the things that you should notice is that the velocity is increasing in the downward direction and the car is accelerating in the downward direction. So here what you see is the acceleration and velocity vectors are pointing in the same direction, indicating that the velocity is going to increase. And one other thing that you should notice is both the sign of the acceleration, in this case negative 9.8 meters per second per second, is the same as the sign of the final velocity, which is negative 26.8 meters per second. So not only do the acceleration and velocity vectors point in the same direction, but they have the exact same sign. They're both negative numbers. So in order to figure out the height that we're going to have to drop this car from, we're going to need to use one of our kinematic equations. But first, let's just summarize some of the information contained in this problem. The initial velocity of this car is 0 meters per second. The final velocity of this car is a negative 26.8 meters per second. The rate at which this car is accelerating or speeding up is negative 9.8 meters per second squared. We don't know the distance that this car is going to fall, and we don't know how long it takes for this car to speed up. So the kinematic equation that I'm going to use to find the height that we need to release this car from is going to be the final velocity of the car squared, which equals the initial velocity of the car squared, plus 2 times the acceleration of the car times the height we need to release this car from. Now in this case, our initial velocity of the car is 0 meters per second, so our equation begins to look like the final velocity of the car squared equals 2 times the acceleration of the car times the height we need to drop this car from. And then what we're going to do is, since we're looking for this distance, this height, we're going to divide both sides by 2 times the acceleration, just like we did in the last case. So what you do to one side of an equation, you do to the other. And then you'll see that this 2a cancels out with this 2a. And we'll find that the height we need to release this car from is going to equal the final velocity of the car squared divided by 2 times the acceleration of the car, which is the acceleration due to gravity. Now in this case, this is going to work out to be negative 26.8 meters per second. And we're going to square the entire term. And then what we're going to do is we're going to divide by 2 times negative 9.8 meters per second squared. This is how fast gravity is speeding up this falling object. Now because there are a few little mathematical tricks that happen here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to square this quantity to show you that you get a positive number. So when you square negative 26.8 meters per second, you should get a positive 718.24 meters squared per second squared. And then you're going to divide that by 2 times a negative 9.8 meters per second squared. Now when you divide 718.24 meters squared per second squared by 2 times negative 9.8 meters per second squared, you get a value of negative 36.6 meters. Now one of the things that you should notice is that the sign of this distance is negative, and that indicates that it's moving in the downward direction. or it's moving in the negative y direction. Another way to think of this is that this car has to fall through a distance of 36.6 meters to attain a final velocity of 26.8 meters per second. So if we want to make sense of this, if the distance this has to fall is negative 36.6 meters, then our initial height is going to be 36.6 meters, and our final height, our y final, is going to be 0 meters. So this is going to be the ground level. So when we look at our change in y, our final y minus our initial y, it's going to be 0 meters minus 
36.6 meters, which works out to be a negative 36.6 meters. And that's the reason for the negative value in this case, because the car is falling in the downward direction, the negative y direction. Now one last thing I want to bring up is that this distance is shorter than the distance that this car needs to accelerate in the horizontal direction. So let's just summarize some of the information that we found. So in the case where we dropped this car from rest, we only needed 36.6 meters for this car to accelerate from rest to 26.8 meters per second. And the reason for that is because the acceleration due to gravity is going to be negative 9.8 meters per second squared. Whereas in the last video, the car could accelerate in the horizontal direction at a rate of 8.1 meters per second squared. And because this acceleration is less than this acceleration, that is, the velocity changes slower when it's accelerating in the horizontal direction than when it's falling in the vertical direction, it required more distance for it to reach a final velocity of 26.8 meters per second. And in fact, we said that it was exactly equal to 44.1 meters, or in order to reach a final velocity of 60 miles per hour, the car needed to travel through a distance of 44.1 meters, whereas for the car to reach a final velocity of 60 miles per hour while falling, it only needed to accelerate through a distance of 36.6 meters. So the difference in the distance is determined by the difference in the rate at which the car can accelerate.